All right, everyone, today on news, you probably didn't really hear much about it. it got buried under, you know, a tidal wave of Biden and coronavirus. But there was a very meaningful story some days ago. Apparently, Jeffrey Epstein, who didn't kill himself, you know, we all know that at this point. I think it's a conspiracy theory to suggest that there's nothing fishy going on in that case. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein, a long-term friend of the Clintons until he hung himself with braided toilet paper or whatever off a three-foot incline, uh, Jeffrey Epstein apparently had his own key in office at Harvard. And uh, when we learned about this, people were suspicious. They're like, well, it's a little bit odd. He was hanging around with all these you know, 19, 20 year olds. I'm sure he had a good time. Now, let's just say that he gave people extra credit. You know, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't think he taught courses. He was sort of just like, because he's rich, a, a donor, he gets his own key. So he could wander around the girls' locker rooms, probably, you know, sniffing things, you know, Biden stuff. He probably took Biden on a tour of Harvard several times. Of course, Biden wasn't a Harvard boy. <laughs> he was a uh, uh, University of Delaware dude. <laughs> he didn't get to go to Ivy. Uh, he's the outside politician because of that. But will they rename Harvard to Jeffrey Epstein Memorial uh, University? Because I looked at it. And, and then they came out with a report that the worst thing was Harvard's response. The, the worst part wasn't the initial story. Okay, he had an office and, and his own key there to the facilities. He's really a billionaire. You know, they knew that there were allegations, but he wasn't in jail. So maybe they figured, well, he's, he's a high roller and he gives us a lot of money. So we're just going to ignore it. You know, at least all the people here are of age. So if he's doing any weird shit, at least it's with adults. Maybe Harvard just figured that. They're like, well, you know, this $50 million is a lot of money. It'll, you know, and, but then <laughs> we found out something far, far worse, which is that numerous unnamed faculty at Harvard, we're not sure exactly who they're talking about, staff, professors, deans, who knows, visited Epstein's Island and his ranch and other things, according to Harvard. Now, this was Harvard's initial official response to it. They're like, well, we've heard about this story, but don't worry, everybody. These people that visited his rape island or his rape ranch and all of these other things, they did it on their own time, not the university's time. So the university is not culpable for their actions. Yeah, so numerous staff at Harvard decided to visit an island where 14-year-olds routinely gave people foot massages. <laughs> Don't worry, they didn't do it on Harvard's time. We didn't pay them to go to Rape Island. Epstein just took them on, the, on his special happy plane, you know, the one that Bill Clinton rode four or five times, and then numerous other Dem politicians mainly. It's okay, though. <laughs> Harvard didn't officially condone this behavior. What a goddamn cop-out. Nobody cares whether your staff were visiting Rape Island on their own time and their own dime, which I'm sure Epstein covered the cost, uh, or, or, or what was happening. Epstein had an office there, and he probably talked to these people and sort of got to know their kinks, because he would look... Epstein's one of those dudes, I have a feeling that what he would do is he would invite someone in. Everyone knew he was rich. Everyone, he was pretty well known, especially in the inner circle of any place where he decided to set up shop. Harvard or DC, Hollywood, whatever. He'd go in and he'd, he'd find people that looked like they wanted a party and he'd get them loaded. He'd give them a couple of drinks or something and they'd get to talking about sexual stuff because everyone knew he was a party boy and he, he fucked models and stuff, even if they didn't know that he had worse proclivities. They at least knew he was a womanizer and, and, and liked to have, you know, pretty girls around. Uh, that were of age, according to these people's recollection. <laughs> of course, they were all of age, uh, and they knew it. Uh, and, and he would get them loaded, and he'd find out if they had weird fantasies and say, come to my island. And then what he would do is, is he would cater to them in return for political favors. Of course, then, of course, he had <laughs> blackmail tape of these people, I'm sure. Uh, that's not a conspiracy. The idea that this dude, out of the kindness of his heart, just happened to give people with a lot of money and a lot of power sexual favors on his special private island and nothing in return, I call bullshit. I think anybody who visited his island should probably be looked into <laughs> because it's probably a reason that they were there. They knew who he was. Now, let's say that some of these people genuinely, they're just like, oh, wow, you know, he's, I'm going to have these two, like, college-age call girls from Harvard that are going to be servicing me for the whole weekend, and Epstein will pay for everything, unlimited margaritas. I can understand. I'm not everyone, I'm not alleging that everyone who visited his island or his, or his dude ranch is, is, is like a predator. I'm simply saying some of them probably are. Some of them probably knew at some point what was going on, or at least suspected it, and kept going. Some of these people went numerous times. So when I hear that Epstein was at Harvard, I say, well, he's a high roller. 
He did the so-called philanthropic thing, which is give a huge amount of money to these various organizations. I'm sure Harvard probably received hundreds of millions over the course of the time that he was uh, allowed access there. He, he could go in and listen to lectures and talk to professors and drink with the dean and, and hang out with, you know, 19-year-old girls. And, and that's all well and good because maybe some of these people are just goddamn ignorant to who he was. But some of them weren't, and some of them visited his island, and probably some of them did it numerous times. I would be very interested to see the full list of people who visited Epstein's Island and see how many Harvard alumni are on that list. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot. Probably in the hundreds. Yeah, probably. And then think, Harvard is sort of the seat. Harvard isn't well known and well regarded because of any particular academic acumen. It's known primarily because of its name, Harvard. It's famous for being famous. It's the Paris Hilton of universities. What happens is you have a bunch of rich alumni and long dynastic old money family names associated with your university, giving you philanthropic funds, and you can build all the best facilities and hire the hardest hitting, most well-known professors, and it's basically fame university. You're not getting any better technically coursework at Harvard, any more rigor at Harvard than you would at a public Ivy university, yeah, UVM, University of Delaware, Phoenix or something, or, or, or even any halfway decent state university. You're not getting any better coursework, but you're getting a name associated. Your name is associated with Harvard. It's there along with the Bidens and, and well, the Bushes, you know, they, they go to uh, Yale uh, and, and, and all of these other names. George Washington's descendants and numerous presidents and Nobel Prize laureates. That's why you go to Harvard. That's why I like the, the alma mater of my graduating class had like a 4.6 GPA qualified for goddamn everything everywhere and still didn't manage to get into Harvard because of the surname. That's the only goddamn reason why. They don't take the best and brightest. They want the most famous because they know that old money manages itself well and generally keeps generating money. It's just a long-term dynastic brand and Harvard wants that money. They want money, and they want the names associated. They want, they want to know, they want the next president to be an alumni of Harvard because it's one more notch in their belt. So Epstein goes there, rich dude, well-known, I mean, extreme levels of wealth. Like, when you own your own private island, that, that's the, and, and not like a little micro-atoll out in the South Pacific that are a dime a dozen. I mean, a, a substantial, settleable, habitable private island that's when you're getting to, to obscene levels of wealth. This is the sort of people that Bernie Sanders doesn't like, uh, to his credit, as far as the Epsteins of the world go. I, I find it, though, troubling that Harvard's official response is, yeah, they visited Rape Island. We know that there were, like, you know, teenage girls there and things going on, probably human trafficking and, and rape and stuff. We know this was all going on, but don't worry. <laughs> they artificially limit their presser. Don't worry. We didn't, we, we, they weren't on college time at the time. They, they, it, was, it was summer, you know, we're out of session. They could do what they want. Epstein came up to him and gave him a margarita and then loaded him on a plane like cargo and they all went and got foot massages from people who were totally 18 at the time. <laughs> yeah, I believe that story. And I believe that none of the higher-ups at Harvard, by the way, were either on that plane or knew what was going on. None of them talked to Epstein ever. They never had any suspicions. It's funny, also, a lot of his friends, like, after the fact, they're like, well, yeah, I know he knew he was creepy. Well, then why were you his friend? Yeah, the only exception is Trump, who basically disowned him long, long ago. It's funny when people try to do the whataboutism thing. Well, Trump rode on his plane once. Yes, to New York, not to Rape Island. There's a big difference. Sometimes rich people lend each other planes for some reason. I, if I was that rich, I wouldn't lend anyone my plane. What if they, like, uh, clog up the toilet or some shit? I don't, I don't want Donald Trump shit in my toilet anyone more than anyone else. You vote for the dude, you still don't want him to use your toilet. Especially since all he eats is, is Big Macs. That might be a little bit of a problem, <laughs> problem for the plumbing, no matter how rich the plane is. That's about all. Peace out.